Greetings, my name is Devendra Das Sarma. I'm an Intel Senior Fellow and I'm a board member of PCI SIG. I'm here to talk about PCI Express 6.0 specification. PCI Express 6.0 uh, doubles the data rate from 5.0. So we go to 64 giga transfers per second, uh, up from 32 giga transfers per second. In order to go to 64 giga transfers per second, we have two choices. One is we could double the frequency or we took the other option, which is keep the frequency the same as 32 giga transfers per second, but introduce four levels of voltage. So far, we have been doing two levels of voltage, which is a zero and a one. Within one unit interval, now we do four levels of voltage. It is known as PAM4, stands for Pulse Amplitude Modulation 4 levels. So four levels of logic. So within every clock interval, think of it as that way. Every Within every clock interval, within every unit interval, you are now sending voltages that are across four levels. So you're getting two bits within a single clock uh, frequency time. Once you go to PAM4, what happens is because you got four voltage levels, you are more susceptible to errors. The errors grow by several orders of magnitude than what we are used to. So far, we were used to 10 to the power minus 12. That was what was known as the bit error rate. With PAM4, we targeted something like a 10 to the power minus 6, which means that every 10 to the power 6 bits, you are going to get an error. And not only a single bit in error, but you are going to have several bits in error after that. That's known as correlation. So in order to mitigate that, we introduce something called forward error correction. So that will correct the error. And also we needed to have a stronger checking mechanism in order to replay that. So that for, in order to do that, we had to introduce the notion of a flick because to do forward error correction, you need a fixed size over which the forward error correction will work. So flit stands for flow control unit. For us, it is 256 bytes. Within that 256 bytes, six bytes are used for doing error correction and eight bytes are there for doing cyclic redundancy check, which is checks whether the data is good after doing correction. And then we have the other parts of the payload. So PCI Express is the ubiquitous PHY that is used in all of the systems today. Everything from your handheld to your supercomputers use PCI Express. So not only is PCI Express used for the load store form of I.O. that PCI Express is known for, but it is also used for other types of uh, connectivity between components. So for example, you, you use PCI Express 5 for doing CPU to CPU connectivity. We also have alternate protocols such as Compute Express Link, which run on PCI Express 5, also use PCI Express protocol layer, but in addition to that, we add coherency and memory semantics. So PCI Express has got this broad usage beyond just the load store I.O. So things like Compute Express Link are very critical. These kind of memory and coherency interconnects are critical because now not only do we have a case where devices are consuming the bandwidth, but also they're helping with the production side of that bandwidth because if you connect more memory behind PCI Express, you are increasing the overall system memory bandwidth that is available. So you are solving the problem, not just from the consumption side, which is great, but also we are helping on the production side of the bandwidth. So PCI Express 6.0 ensures that those applications get the best possible uh, latency in, ad in addition to the PCI Express applications. PCI Express 6.0 is based on backwards compatibility with all the prior generations. One of the uh, fundamental tenets of our evolution of PCI Express is that we have evolved from Gen 1 up till Gen 6 and even going forward to Gen 7 in a fully backwards compatible manner. So what that means is that a PCI Express 6.0 device that is capable of let's say running at 64 gig with PAM4 will still operate we interoperate with a prior generation PCI Express device from Gen 1 days running at 2.5 gig. So they completely interoperate. Full backwards compatibility is something that is very critical for PCI Express applications because our customers need it in order to ensure that their investments are protected. You want to make sure that not everybody transitions on the same day 
and you don't want to throw away all of your PCI Express devices because they are not in the latest and greatest generation. You want to reuse them as much as you can. For example, if you have an SSD that was running that you bought, which was with PCI Express Gen 3, you still want to be able to use it. Whenever you move to your system to PCI Express Gen 6, PCI Express provides that. That's our uh, guarantee of interoperability as we move forward. PCI Express, uh, uh, of course, caters to the existing set of markets and is also opening up to a new set of usages and uh, markets. So, for example, everything from the handheld to the, you know, desktop to the laptop to, you know, your IoT to servers, cloud, everything is covered. Enterprise, all of those are covered with PCI Express, HPC segment, all of those. In addition to that, because of our higher speeds and feeds, we are able to also get some new usages like enhanced AI. We are able to run PCI Express over a cable and connect to, uh, to devices that can be disaggregated in a, in a rack. So those are the new kinds of markets that we are targeting in addition to the traditional things like, you know, for example, uh, aerospace kind of applications, military applications, all of those things. So pretty much everything uh, in the compute continuum uses PCI Express. And what is important is as more and more applications come on board, requiring ever more bandwidth, ever more performance, we are able to sustain that and meet the needs of our customers by doing the evolution of PCI Express the way we have been able to do. One simple word is we evolve the technology in a backwards compatible manner. We are cognizant of doing something that applies across the board. We don't do 50 different solutions for 50 different people or 50 different set of customers. If you look into PCI Express, uh, it's one specification, one silicon that works across the board. And we take a lot of care. It's never uh, easy, but we make sure that we do the due diligence to make sure that we work across the entire compute continuum. That's the reason for the success. Even when we have we made a transition from the PCI bus based to the PCI Express link based architecture, we ensure that we maintain software compatibility. That's critical for people to make sure that their investments are protected. That's the reason of success. you got, of course, a 900 plus member company organization that's based on this fundamental belief of evolving in a fully backwards compatible manner. you got a tremendous amount of innovations in, that's going on into this space. So uh, that's the key to success for PCI Express. Please go to www.pcisig.com. We have a lot of webinars available there. We have a lot of talks available there, papers, white papers. You can learn a lot from our website, www.pcisig.com.